Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. Do shady thing, fire my boss, hide millions from your client, I don't think so. Project Skunk, an engineer's tale. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Do shady thing, fire my boss, hide millions from your client, I don't think so. Forgive me if this is long. This happened a while ago, but it's still so fresh on my mind. I left college with a business degree in one hand and no job in the other. And like so many colleges, the promises of alumni willing to give jobs to graduates could not have been further from the truth. So I had to seek out my start from the bottom. I found a good job in operations at a company, I can't say who without giving it away. Had a great boss, who taught me pretty much everything I needed to know. Work was great and the money was good. I need to explain how the business worked so you can understand how the plan worked. The corporate office was in California and we were, not. There are a lot of things that went on at this company, and I can't get into all of them because it would just take away from the story, but let's just say they had a very Stratton Oakmont vibe when it came to sales. I started out worked in operations with some of the smaller clients, but with some help from my boss, was able to climb the ladder rather quickly to the point of being over all the operations and order processing for the firm. We had a very large client, 90% of the company's business, the way it worked was we had two sets of sales reps, TSRs and CSRs TSRs were the heavy hitters who reached out to the other big businesses and tech firms to extend their warranties on a product. They made real good money. The CSRs were more of the mom and pop crowd and the inbound sales calls for those that wanted to extend their warranties. The reps were all given codes that associates the client's files with theirs, so if someone did a renewal automatically, they would get paid as it was their client. Pretty sweet gig. The client hired the firm to be the middleman for their B2B as they handled all of their everyday clients. For every $100 that came into our firm, 18% or $18 would be for the company and the rest would be sent to the clients with the warranties activated. Most of the clients paid by CC or PO with a wire transfer, but there would also be a good amount of checks each week that would need to be processed. A little while after I started, the client check portion was now going to be overseen by one of the sales managers. Didn't really phase me because I was working on the smaller accounts. Since we were a publicly traded company, all the sales reps orders had to go to operations to be fulfilled. They weren't allowed to process them on their own. This is when things started going downhill. My boss at the time was given temporary access to the financials as they were hiring a new CFO and he had a background with it. We went to lunch like we had done plenty of times before, but he seemed different. When I asked him if something was wrong, he told me that something looked off with with our biggest client for one of the accounts. He wanted to make sure before he said anything to the higher-ups. While this was going on, I had been offered the chance to be our new compliance officer, which means I would need to make sure everything was on the up and up. Soon after, I come in to find out that my boss was just terminated for a multitude of reasons all of which had to be untrue because he was a pretty well-liked guy with not just with the company, but with our client as well. As I log into my terminal I see that before he left, he had given me admin access to his files. Here's where things started to pop off. Remember those checks that clients were sending in to renew their warranties? Well we were cashing them all right. Apparently we just weren't adding those renewals to their products in the system. That would have triggered a payout to our client, who as you remember would be getting 82% of that money. Instead, they were cashing the checks, keeping the money, and using the interest in the accounts, yes, in the mid-2000s banks actually paid interest, to cover losses in their collections department. It was wild to see that this was happening, and something had to be done. So I hatched a plan. First things first, secure a new job cause it won't be a fun place to work after this. Done. My previous boss knew of other companies that would scoop me up. Put in my notice and stated in my exit interview that I just couldn't be a part of what was happening, even though HR was in on this. I wanted it on the record. 
Next, get approval for overtime for all the operations crew to come in on a Saturday and double pay them. They arrive early Saturday, obviously not too thrilled as to why they are there. But when I explain that if they complete the task, not only to so they get their overtime, but they get nice bonuses, they were much happier. They spent the entire day applying all of those checks dated back years to the client accounts, we are talking millions of dollars. When all the sales reps arrived Monday, they were shocked to hell. Not only did they meet their weekly goals before picking up the phones, they made their monthly and quarterly goals too. Two weeks into the new quarter. Cheers. Partying. Yelling. Screaming. Celebrating. Except sales management. They went from being really excited, to skeptical, to confused, to OSH asterisk T in about two hours. They realized where it must have come from. Because not only did the company hit all these sales, since it had been over a day, the client came into work Monday to see a very nice payday in their system as well. And like anyone, would have questions, and says they are coming out to congratulate the team on such great numbers. So management starts scrambling because they can't figure out how this happened and all under my boss's old login. On my last day I arrive and in the lobby. I've got my box to for the last of my things, ets. Guy walks up as is waiting for the elevator with me, and we strike up conversation. He notices my box and jokes about getting fired, and I just tell him I had a great opportunity come up so I decided to leave before sh asterisk t hits the fan, we laughed. Really nice down-to-earth guy. He realizes we are getting off on the same floor. He asks if I work for X, I say yes. He asks where, I tell him operations, and he reveals that he is the CEO of our client, Gulp. We go our separate ways. Client shows up, and there is a big party. Afterwards, the client says that they would love to get a breakdown of where most of the sales came from so they can allocate more money to that department. Management says sure, but it made up a lie about how they can't share client payment info due to regulations, blah blah blah. Cue my exit from the company. Two weeks go by and I get a phone call from a number I don't recognize, so I let it go to VM. When I get off work I checked it, to find out it was the CEO of the client where I used to work. He has had something come up and would like to talk to me. Of course I'm nervous as hell but I call him back and he picks up on the first ring and we get to chatting for a bit and he finally just asks me why did you leave? I tell him I had a great opportunity come up. He doesn't buy it and says that apparently my comment about sh asterisk t hitting the fan really stuck with him and he thinks something more is going on. So after a little more prodding from him, I tell him just look at collections and that's all I can say he thanks me and I hang up. Two days later, he pulled the plug on the account. Apparently my old company tried to threaten him with a lawsuit for pulling the account three years early. He replied with, that's fine, because when I show the courts that I have the evidence that you committed fraud. Corporate came in and cleaned house. All of management was fired within the day. One month later, my friends and I had a very memorable trip in Vegas all courtesy of our old client. Project Skunk, an engineer's tale. Okay originally this was posted over in our slash RBI, and they suggested a longer version would go well here. So here goes. I hope you enjoy it. Decades ago I worked the worst crap job of my life as a software engineer, writing code for an OBD2 car code scanner at a completely dysfunctional business I'm not going to name, but I'll drop a hint and say all their products are all orange. It was right after September 11th, I was laid off, and jobs were nearly impossible to find. But I managed to land one there and out of desperation I took the job. And there I met probably the best friend I ever made at work, I'll call him Agents. Agents was a coder's coder, a real laid-back guy, and an all-around good egg. Imagine if the dude could code, you'd pretty much have Agents. We had many wonderful overlong lunches working there. And I needed the calm he taught me because that place was nuts. All the departments poisonously hated each other, the head of engineering was as paranoid as a Russian czar, rampant abuse, theft, the works. A total madhouse. But eventually everyone has their limit, and agents had put in his two weeks notice. Just to let you know how nice he was, 
he was the only person that quit that wasn't escorted to his car immediately by an armed guard, which was standard procedure. He was permitted to put in his last two weeks. So imagine my surprise when agents said I want some payback before I go. Maybe a few days earlier, the paranoid czar of engineering gave us this odd missive. When you leave your desk for any reason, you are to take your papers on your desk and lock them in your desk. You are to lock your computer. You are to put a password in your BIOS and shut down your machine when you leave for the night. You are to erase your marker boards. Leave no scrap of paper out or any hint of what you are working on. And no explanation why, which was standard for him. Just do it. Of course, we all wanted to know why. So our man in the field, I'll call him Bond, went about finding out. Bond was social and likable and had friends in every department in the increasingly balkanized organizational structure. I'll ask around and don't tell anybody. He found out. Engineering czar got word somehow that people in the sales department were working late and waiting for engineering to leave. Once we left, they were going through our desks and computers looking for clues as to what we were working on. They would then copy this stuff down, claim it as a project I'm heading up and present the material to their superiors so they could look valuable and get raises and all that fun sales stuff. Yes I know sales is supposed to query their customers for features they'd like, then make proposals to engineering. I did say this place is dysfunctional, right? Engineers drove the product design since sales couldn't be bothered. And why should they, when they could just steal it instead? Right. So agents had had enough. We made Project Skunk. All projects in this place were named after an animal. We decided to leave a hint in the name that all was not as it should be. And we dreamed up the most amazing OBD2 scanner in the world. Here are some of the specs. Since everyone knows 32-bit processors are more expensive than 8-bit processors, we would save money by using a 2-bit processor. The EEPROMs that held the automotive database were expensive as well. So to save space, we would use ZIP to compress the database 12 times and store it on a single 4K EEPROM. Predictive analysis. If you enter in the last few codes your car threw, it would extrapolate and tell you the next part on your car that was going to break. I thought of this one, I'm especially proud of it. And so on. We spent a happy afternoon drawing up box diagrams, with flux capacitors and n-dimensional grommets and yoyodyne compensators, lots of specs and analyses and other assorted bits of utter nonsense. We scattered them all over agents' desk, then went home. The very next day, our man in the field bond gives us the news. Project Skunk is a hit. The entire building is buzzing over it. Salespeople are tripping over each other taking credit. It took about a week before the stolen goods were finally passed upstream to the six-figure guys before someone with half a clue noticed that everything in the project was absolutely f asterisk king impossible. Agents had left by then, but I tracked him down and we had lunch, and I told him the results of the ill harvest he had left behind. Sales had been seriously embarrassed in front of their superiors, and the ones over them as well. I don't know if anything came of it. It was an old boys network there, and I'm sure they covered for each other somehow. But they were embarrassed, and they were hurt. How do I know? Every day from that day on, any time a person from sales passed me in a hallway or something, they would physically turn their face from me to shun me. It was hilarious. Like somehow on the a asterisk asterisk hole for making fake stuff for them to steal. They went under not too long after that. The building is now a medical company supplying COVID masks. 